All right, it is James and the Giant Economy, and as you can see, my name is James, and I'm getting going with technology. This is not my normal spot. I'm actually in New York right now, as you can see with the cold weather wear and everything. Uh, but we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about some really uh, interesting things uh, that are happening and how this affects us as investors. Again, I've got a big real estate background. I know a lot of you do as well. Um, and this has to do with unemployment, which is very important to us because unemployment is the foundation of really all asset purchases because people need employment for money. But it's specifically, specifically uh, ones like uh, buying residential real estate, right? Uh, you can't buy a house unless you've got a job. If unemployment goes up, that means less people have jobs, et cetera, right? So we're going to jump into it. Uh, this is called the Psalm Rule, S-A-L-M. That's, that's a little tidbit I'm going to share with you today and go over uh, from two different people, right? Uh, I first heard this from Daniel DiMartino Booth, which is the first guy that uh, goes over is going to uh, reference her. She is a great follow. I would definitely follow her. She has spent time working for the Federal Reserve and outside of it. So she sees both worlds, right? But what is the Psalm Rule? The Psalm Rule identifies signals related to the start of a recession when the three-month moving average of national unemployment rate, U3, rises by 0.5% or half a percent points or more during its relatively uh, uh, relative is low during the previous 12 months. What does that mean? So unemployment is measured, right? So the lower unemployment is, the better. That means the more people that are employed, okay? So they measure unemployment, not employment, right? So if in the last 12 months, and again, unemployment kind of goes up and down, it doesn't really spike. It's not super volatile, which is a good thing, right? Uh, but it goes up like, you know, a certain percentage point or like more like a one tenth of a percent up and down, give or take, right? So if you look back in the last 12 months, what is the lowest point, right? I think it was about 3% if I remember right for the last 12 months. Well, the Fed just came out and they said, hey, unemployment right now is at three and a half percent. Or I forget the technical numbers, but um, they said that it went up by a, a half a percentage, which isn't super big, you and me may not notice, especially if you're in awesome economy states like Texas, Florida, Tennessee, et cetera, that are just doing amazing right now, right now. Uh, but this is things you need to keep on your radar, okay, because this will affect us all eventually. Uh, and this is a good metric of saying, hey, once it goes up by half a percentage point from its 12 months low, that signals the start of a recession. So the question is, are we in a recession right now? Are we in the beginning as a one? And we're going to go over what two people talk about and how they identify the Psalm rule. I like what you're doing there. How about Danielle DiMartino Booth? The one and only Danielle DiMartino Booth, who is wonderful to come on our channel. She, she talked about amazing. the Fed put. She talked about what normal Americans should do. She introduced something that I had not heard of. I've had these discussions, but there's actually an economic rule that I didn't know about. It is called the Psalm rule. I think I heard it spelled correctly as S-A-H-M, Psalm, Psalm rule. Basically, the Psalm rule says, if unemployment ever goes up half a percent from the bottom in a cycle, the recession is started. Why is that important? On Friday, the Bureau of Economic and Labor Statistics, besides saying we grew less jobs than expected, also, ding, 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 said the unemployment rate went to 3.9%, which of course is half a percent higher than 3.4%, which we have hit many times as a cycle low. That's interesting. That's interesting, especially when you know that I am calling for a Q1, Q2 recession. Not deep and dark, but negative growth and an actual called recession. It does seem like we are moving that direction. Again, real, um, uh, why am I drawing a blank on the name? The Atlanta Fed, real GDP or GDP now, GDP now. Remember last week after the ISM numbers were horrible, horrible, took their expectation for Q4 GDP from 2.3 to 1.4, I think. Oof. Significant drop. I think the economy is slowing down. I don't know about you, but that's what it feels like. All right. So he kind of laid it out for you. He's, he's predicting a Q1, Q2 recession. I am thinking... Um, we're definitely going to see a slowdown. They might label it in Q1, Q2. I think Q2 or at least Q3 at the latest next year, we're definitely going to be in one. Um, but uh, let's let's go over – let's put it this way. A recession is important because you, as an investor, 
the best time to buy is when assets are low, right? And so you want to try and kind of plan or read the tea leaves a little bit, you know, stick your finger in the air, see which way the wind is blowing to go in with it. Uh, excuse me, to go to know where the economy is going, right? It kind of Wayne, Wayne Gritsky, his, uh, his famous quote of, I just went where the puck, I knew the puck would be, right? That's how good he was. That's one of the things he learned from years of playing on the ice. So as investors, we want to kind of look in the future and see, predict where's the puck, where's the economy going to be, and then we can prepare for it, and we can just load up and buy a ton of assets and just kind of re-retire, do whatever we want. We're going to have that financial freedom that we all kind of long for. Right. The next person is going to give a little bit different of a um, of a take on the song. And, and, I, and I like listening to both of these sides. Right. So one says, says hey, we're beginning a recession. Right. Um, and he even said, we definitely noticed a slowdown. I don't know about you, but I, I, I noticed a slowdown. I know that I noticed that cash is harder to come by these days. Right. So let's see what she has to say. Sam, can you tell us how the SOM rule works? And then we'll have a discussion about that first. Right, so the SOM rule is a recession indicator. It doesn't forecast a recession. It tells us we are in one with a high degree of certainty. And this is Claudia so SOM. Use the <laughs> national unemployment rate. Take the three month average. You wanna you wanna smooth out the bumps and wiggles. We you know don't overreact to one data point. And you look at in that series, you compare the most recent value, which right now is 3.8% through October in the United States. And you compare that to the low of that series over the prior 12 months, which if we go back into the summer, that was three and a half percent. So right now, the SOM rule has risen uh, three tenths of a percentage point. The trigger that would tell us we are in a recession is five tenths percentage point. So we are not there. And yet we have moved much closer to the trigger uh, since in the second half of this year. So it is something to pay attention to. I will say also the real quick. So she the numbers are different. She says three tenths. Um, Dan and Martino both and said and, and said uh, half a percentage. Uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but. Here's where they kind of converge. The origin of the SOM rule, why this exists, is I had put together a policy proposal in early 2019, part of a volume recession ready that had all various automatic stabilizer proposals to send out stimulus checks automatically as soon as a recession starts. So based on economic conditions, not on politics. The SOM rule was the supporting actor in this proposal in that I just needed something that was accurate and said, send out the checks. So that that's the idea of it is helping us know when a recession has started so we can get the relief out, we can get the policy support out to make the recession not as bad as it could be. Uh, just So just to clarify your take. So again, the SOM rule is pretty new. It's, it's 2019, right? It's gone through a pandemic just like we have, <laughs> okay? But it, it's got some historical background to it. And this, you know, I just noticed um, as make as I'm making this video is this is Claudia SOM, the originator of the rule. So we're getting it straight from the horse's mouth. This was great. At three month average. So even though the trough of this year was 3.4% back in April, mm -hmm. uh, that's technically a 0.5% increase, uh, but that still doesn't count, right? Because you're taking an average. Right. I mean, for the SOM rule, of course, right. it counts. I mean, that there was a lot of interest in uh, the the uh, last jobs report because we had 3.9% in October versus 3.4% sometime in the, Here's the 5%. early summer. So yes, that was a five tenths percentage point increase in the monthly unemployment rate. What I found looking back over history is that having some amount of smoothing, and this, frankly, we should do this with all economic data that we get month to month, is to you know take a three month average and use that. If you don't do that, there are going to be times where it's a false positive. Right, where it says we're in a recession, but we're not. So, yeah, it's just that's the way the my indicator is set up. Um, but that you know, there there are plenty of other ways people look at and think about: Are we in a recession? In particular, are we headed towards a recession? Right. I do want to ask you about uh, recession indicators uh, uh, in just a bit. But uh, going back to the uh, SOM rule and the unemployment rate. So, um, do you expect the unemployment rate to continue its upward trajectory? At what point? So let's let's actually just back up and clarify: At what number would the SOM rule be triggered? So we're at 3.9 percent. What is the golden number here? If the unemployment rate were to move up to 4% and stay around there, it has to get up above 4% because a five tenths increase is four, right? So you've got to do something that gets uh, to four or higher on average. So we got to see it there for some period of time. Uh, and I, my base case is we get there and the SOM rule triggers. We have, I'm sure we can talk more about this too. There's a, there's a lot of imbalances we're working out in the labor market. We've seen a pretty big burst of people coming in looking for work at the same time that the job gains have slowed some. They're still solid, but it's this, now we have more workers and the jobs are catching up, which is the, the reverse of what we had under the labor shortages. And frankly, one of my big lessons from COVID, from things I got wrong, is it takes longer than expected to work out disruptions. Okay, I'm going to stop there real quick and we're going to wrap this up. But 
what's the difference in the three tenths to five tenths rule, right? And that we saw in the first video is five tenths. Hey, trigger the psalm rule. And she said three tenths, the originator of the psalm rule, right? Um, so what she said was that she smooths it out to a three month average, right? So if you're looking at it at a one month average, yeah, it's going to be um, half percent higher, right? Or five basis points. If you're looking at three month average, it's only at 0.3% or uh, three basis points, right? Um, but she says, hey, I think we're going to get there, <laughs> right? So it's heading in that direction. It is looking like um, we are going to hit a recession at some time. I'm guessing sometime in, in quarter two, latest three of next year, right? I'm predicting in Q2, the dollar and oil will be at, at really all time highs again. And that's just going to crush everything. It's just going to crush everything. And then it may show up the recession or, or at least the, the feelings of it, the, the notice of the, hey, we are in a recession, may show up in Q3. You know, these things are hard to predict. But I think 2024 is going to be really, really bumpy. Um, what does that mean between you and, for you and I as investors? That means buckle up. It means take a look at your assets, right? Uh, find the ones that can cost you money. So if you have rental homes, do some math. Hey, if that tenant's squats for three months or it takes you three months to get them out right um or like one month to say hey you know please pay your rent give them another month and just kind of goes on and then you got to go to the courthouse and file everything and get them all out that takes like just going to the courthouse and finally it's going to be six weeks give or take before you can get them out okay uh ask me how i know <laughs> um but so average three months and then once they get out they're not going to leave the place in like spick and span turnover shape you're gonna have to go do go in there and redo stuff right so add another depending on the square footage you know ten to twenty thousand dollars to to redo the the flooring and the walls patches all that stuff right um costs have gone up you know so do the math on that and figure hey if you know 20 30 40 percent of them default and i have to get new riches in type thing how much should I be saving? Plus all these other things, plus my mortgage and all this other stuff. So um, look at your assets, right? If you have ones that cost you money, take a look at those and prepare, right? Also, have some cash on hand um, right now. And I am doing the video on this. Um, I'm going to do a, the next video. Like and subscribe because the next video is going to be about uh, real estate in general, mostly commercial, but also residential. Uh, the And then also I've got to go into what a melt up is, right? Uh that is it's kind of scary for me but and i think eventually we will see what that is um but we're gonna go into that in some other videos right some things that i've been learning listening to other people that are smarter than i am and i'm just i'm just um happy to to be able to listen to them right um but yeah as an investor like prepare have some cash on hand get rid of all your bad debt if you're in credit card debt start to pay that get that off right um i wouldn't say pay it down i'd say uh the, my best way that i Again, none of this is financial advice, but my best way that I take care of credit card debt is I hold cash and I just pay off huge chunks of it at one time, right? Because that if I have a rainy day, that cash comes in handy and I'm not furthering my credit card debt, right? Or or some other bad debt. Okay. If you've got long term like debt at you know three or four or five percent, hey, that's great. Just pay the monthly minimum monthly and just keep it rolling and just save cash, right? Uh, but we want to take advantage of the times when it's low. That's those are the best times to buy ever. Like I might do a video on one of the houses I bought in 2011 and I sold in 2021, 2022. Long in short, they doubled in value. They doubled in value. I made so much cash on those things. It's not funny, okay? But I also bought at the bottom, okay, in that bottom trough, and I want to do it again. And hopefully, maybe you want to do it with me, type thing. But the last thing she said I want to hit on is that. For, um, let me see if I can back it up a little bit. The reverse of what we had under the labor shortages. And frankly, one of my big lessons from COVID, there it is. things I got wrong, is it takes longer than expected to work out disruptions. It takes longer than expected to work out disruptions. So, as many of you know, I'm in the oil and gas space, and there are lots of disruptions there. It is actually my gold mine because, um, Things aren't been frank. Things aren't being worked out very well, and so the money that, that me and some other partners have in it are is doing uh, really really well. If you're interested in um, uh, more info about it, just let me know. Type thing. Information is free. Didn't cost anything. Uh, but I'm gonna let you go with that. I hope you guys prepare. I hope you guys let me know your thoughts on the Psalm rule. Again, this is Claudia's Psalm. I would also encourage you to listen to her entire thing. It's really good. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil the ending for you, but she does take a twist and and um, 
at the end that's actually quite good. So I'll let you do with that. I'll let you go. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I do. I am trying to grow this channel. Um, and uh, I do thank you for your support, you know, because I want to be there to help others, uh, to partner with others, to, um, you know, get others out of poverty that I grew up in, to be, to be honest with you. So thanks for that. I will see you in the next video.